Welcome to the Single Goal Show. I'm your host, Larry Lease. Today on Let's Talk Film and TV, we're diving into the life and legacy of the one and only Quentin Tarantino. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Poddex, for sponsoring this episode. Who is Poddex? I'm glad you asked. Poddex is the hottest new tool for podcasters looking to have more meaningful conversations or to gamify their podcasts. Simply shuffle up, ask a question, and let the content roll. Get yours today at Pondex.com. And if you use the promo code Larry21, it will get you 10% off your order. Check them out today. If you have a podcast and you're looking to get more engagement, get more listeners, get, even get more downloads, check it out. That's Larry21 for 10% off your order at Pondex.com. And also, we have merch. We now have Cinema Gold t-shirts, hats, coffee mugs. Check it out today. The link to the store will be in the description. And as always, if you want to support the show, you can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash cinema gold. Your support helps the channel grow. We can upgrade our equipment, pay uh, for new hosts if they want to come in and host new shows. You can also help us launch better shows, new shows. Now, let's dive right into life and legacy of one Quentin Tarantino. As a child, Tarantino was a fan of the early eras of Marvel Comics, particularly those that were plotted, plotted and drawn by Jack Kirby with dialogue by Stan Lee. And is a confessed fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In December 2000 interview with John Scott Lewinsky, Digital Spy, Tarantino said that he plans to retire from filmmaking when he is 60 in order to focus on writing novels and film literature. He is skeptical of the film industry going digital, saying, quote, if it actually gets to the place where you can't show 35 millimeter film in theaters anymore and everything is in digital projection, I won't even make it to 60. He has also stated that he has a plan, although not etched in stone, to retire after making his 10th movie. Tarantino said, quote, if I get to the 10th, do a good job and don't screw it up. Well, that sounds like a good way to end the old career. Quentin Jerome Tarantino was born May 27, 1963. Obviously, everybody knows him as an American filmmaker, director, screenwriter, producer, film critic, and actor. His films are characterized by nonlinear storylines, dark humor, stylized violence, foot fetishism, clearly, extended dialogue, ensemble cast, References to pop culture, alternate history, and neo noir. Tarantino was the only child of Connie McHugh and aspiring actor Tony Tarantino, who left the family before his son's birth. He was named in part for Quint Asper, Burt Reynolds' character in the CBS series Gunsmoke. Tarant Tarantino's mother met his father during a trip to Los Angeles, where Tony was a law student and would be entertaining. After a brief marriage and divorce, Connie Tarantino left Los Angeles and moved to Knoxville, where her parents lived. In 1966, Tarantino and his mother returned to Los Angeles. Tarantino's mother married musician Curtis, I uh, can't even say the guy's last name, soon after arriving in Los Angeles, and the family moved to Torrance, a city in Los Angeles County's South Bay. He encouraged Tarantino's love in movies and accompanied him to numerous film screenings. Tarantino's mother allowed him to see movies with adult content, such as Carnal Knowledge, Deliverance. After his mother's divorce, he received a misdiagnosis of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Tarantino was sent to live with his grandparents in Tennessee. He remained there less than a year before returning to California. However, Tarantino later revealed that he would never share his wealth with his mother as she had ridiculed his writing skills when he was still at school. At 14 years old, Tarantino wrote one of his earliest works, a screenplay called Captain Peach Fuzz, The Anchovy Bandit, based on Hal Needham's 1977 film Smokey and the Bandit, starring Burt Reynolds. The summer after his 15th birthday, Tarantino was grounded by his mother for shoplifting Eleanor Leonard's novel Switch from Kmart. He was allowed to leave only to attend the Torrance Community Theater, where he participated in such plays as Two Plus Two Makes Sex and Romeo and Juliet. At age 15, Tarantino dropped out of Narbonne High School in Harbor City, Los Angeles, 
They worked as an usher and an adult movie theater in Torrance called the Pussycat Theater. Later, Tarantino attended acting classes at the James Best Theater Company, where he met several of his eventual collaborators. While at James Best, Tarantino also met Craig Hammond, with whom he would collaborate to produce his first film in 1987. Throughout the 1980s, Tarantino had a number of jobs. He spent time as a recruiter in the aerospace industry. After five years, he worked at Video Archives, a video store in Manhattan Beach, California. Actor Danny Strong describes Tarantino as such a movie buff. He had so much knowledge of films that he would try to get people to watch really cool movies. After meeting in a Hollywood party, Lawrence Bender encouraged Tarantino to write a script. His first attempt on a script, which he described as a straight 70s exploitation action movie, was never published and was abandoned soon after. In 1987, Tarantino co-wrote and directed his first film, My Best Friend's Birthday, in 1987. It was left uncompleted, but its screenplay later formed the basis for true romance. In 1986, Tarantino was employed in his first Hollywood job, working with Roger Avery as production assistant in Dolph Lundgren's exercise video, Maximum Potential. The following year, he played an Elvis impersonator in Sophia's Wedding Part 1 an episode in the fourth season of the Golden Girls, which was broadcast on November 19, 1988. Tarantino recalled in 2020 that the pay he received from that part helped finance Reservoir Dogs. He estimated he initially was paid about 600 bucks, but since the episode was frequently a rerun because it was on a best of lineup, he received about $3,000 in residuals over three years. Damn, I would love to do that. Just be a... Uh, side character on a TV show for one episode and receive three grand over three years. You mind that? And now on to the life and legacy of Tarantino in the 1990s. Tarantino received his per first paid writing assignment in the early 1990s when Robert Kurtzman hired him to write the script for From Dusk Till Dawn. In January 1992, Tarantino's neo-war crime thriller Reservoir Dogs, which he wrote, directed, and acted in as Mr. Brown, was screened at the Sundance Film Festival, which was an immediate hit, with the film receiving a positive response from the critics. The dialogue-driven heist film set the tone for Tarantino's later films. Tarantino wrote the script for the film at Three and a Half Week Bender and forwarded it to director Monty Hellman. Hellman helped Tarantino secure funding from Richard Gladstein at Live Entertainment which later became artisan, now known as Lionsgate. Harvey Keitel read the script and also contributed to the budget, taking a role as co-producer and also playing a major part in the picture. Tarantino's screenplay, True Romance, was optioned and the film was eventually released in 1993. The second script that Tarantino sold was for the film Natural Born Killers, which was revised by Richard Rutowski and director Oliver Stone. Tarantino was given story credit and stated in an interview that he wished the film well, but later disowned the final film. The film engendered anonymity in the publication of a tell all book titled Killer Instinct by Jane Hampshire, who, with Don Murphy, had an original option on the screenplay and produced the film, led to Tarantino physically assaulting Murphy in an AGO restaurant in West Hollywood, California in October 1997. Murphy subsequently filed a $5 million lawsuit against Tarantino. The case ended with the judge ordering Tarantino to pay Murphy $450. Tarantino was also an uncredited screenwriter on both Crimson Tide in 1995 and The Rock in 1996. Following the success of Reservoir Dogs, Tarantino was approached by Hollywood and offered numerous projects, including Speed, Men in Black, but instead retreated to Amsterdam to work on the script for Pulp Fiction.
Tarantino wrote, directed, and acted in the black comedy crime film Pulp Fiction in 1994, painting the anesthetization of violence for which he is known, as well as his nonlinear storylines. Tarantino received the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay, which he shared with Roger Avery, who contributed to the story. He also received a nomination in the Best Director category. The film received another five nominations, including for Best Picture. Tarantino also won the Palme d'Or for the film at the 94 Cannes Film Festival. The film grossed over $200 million and earned positive reviews. In 1995, Tarantino participated in the anthology film Four Rooms, a collaboration that also included director Robert Rodriguez, Allison Anders, and Alexander Rockwell. Tarantino directed and acted in the fourth segment of The Man from Hollywood, a tribute to the Alfred Hitchcock Presents The Man from the South. He retained with Rodriguez later in the year with a supporting role in Desperado, while 1996 from Dust Till Dawn was finally released with Rodriguez directing and Tarantino in a minor role alongside Cattell, George Clooney, and Juliette Lewis. His third feature film was Jackie Brown, and after of Elmore Leonard's novel Rum Punch. An homage to black exploitation films that starred Pam Greer, who starred in many of the films that were on in the 1970s. It received positive reviews and was called a comeback for Greer and co star Robert Forster. Leonard considered Jackie Brown to be his favorite of the 26 different screen adaptations of his novels and short stories. In 1998, Tarantino made his major Broadway stage debut as a a moral psycho killer and revival of the 1966 play Wait Until Dark, which received unfavorable reviews from critics, but its star power ensured a nearly sold out production for its limited 16 week Broadway run. In December 1999, Tarantino was attached to, film, to a film adaptation of the Marvel comic Iron Man from New Line Cinema. Nothing came of the project. Throughout the 90s, Tarantino had a number of minor acting roles, including and Eddie Presley, Sleep With Me, Somebody to Love, All-American Girl, Destiny Turns on the Radio, Desperado, Ducks Till Dawn, and Girl 6. Throughout his career, Tarantino and his films have frequently received nominations from major awards, including seven Academy Awards, seven BAFTA Awards, seven Golden Globe Awards, two Director Guilds of America Awards, 16 Saturn Awards, He's won the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay twice for Pulp Fiction and Django Unchained. Four times have been nominated for the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival, winning once for Pulp Fiction in 94. In addition to his recognition for writing and directing films, Tarantino has received five Grammy Award nominations and a Primetime Emmy Award nomination. In 2005, Tarantino was awarded the honorary Icon of the Decade at the 10th Empire Awards. He has earned a Lifetime Achievement Award from two organizations in 2007 from Cinema Manila and from the Rome Film Festival in 2012. In 2011, Tarantino was awarded the Honorary César by the Academy des Arts et Techniques du Cinema. Let us know in the comment section below what do you think is Quentin Tarantino's best film? What do you like the most of his um, filmography? What do you um, who you not like the most? I think for me, his best. It's tough. I'm gonna go with his best as Reservoir Dogs. And I really don't think he's got anything bad. Honestly, like I watched all his movies, none of them are really bad. Like, I still enjoy it. I don't know why people hate it so much, but I enjoy it now. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. As much as I enjoy Pulp Fiction or Reservoir Dogs. And of course, you can find this on social media. Twitter at Cinema Gold 2. Or actually, Cinema Gold Show, excuse me. And Instagram is The Cinema Gold Show. Of course, the show was possible. This episode was possible by the sponsorship of Poddex. Till next time, remember to watch something new and recommend the ones you enjoy. As always, you can let us know in the comment section below what you thought about this episode. And 
Is there a movie we should watch of Tarantino again? Let's know. And if you want to see more of these episodes from the Let's Talk Film and TV, uh, you can check out the video right here. And for another video that you might like, look right here.